Okay, here we have it. We have a three stack, I guess a microwave array, if you will. Uh, this is the new addition here. It's an 1100 watt, so this is about as high as I can go. We have the 900 and the 600. And today I'll be benchmarking the 1100 watt here and seeing about what the ramp rate I can achieve with a medium size element. This microwave is a little nicer than the ones I purchased on Amazon. However, it was uh, given for free. Uh, so uh, one thing to note that I always do is take out the little plastic insert. So this, this tray kind of wobbles around, but if you don't, that's going to melt and leave a little bit of a charry mess uh, down there. So just take that out before you uh, try any of this stuff here. Okay, so how we go about doing that is by uh, clearing out the ballast on the surface here. Uh, and we've placed a single element inside the ballast supported just about uh, by a couple inches here. This is my largest crucible. Uh, I'm trying to see where the, we can max out with, the, with this size because it is very convenient uh, because it takes up a lot of the space in the microwave gives a lot of options, so if we can get high enough temperatures, then it'll be very useful uh, for future projects. Uh, I'm going to leave uh, an empty layer here so that I can uh, check the temperature with an infrared gun, and we'll be doing 10 minute bursts and recording the results, uh, graphing those out for uh, everyone to see. I suppose you get what you pay for. Uh, this being a little bit more expensive microwave, I, I have a good bit of clearance um, and a nice little light so that I can see what I'm uh, reaching into. Um, but actually, I could go with even a bigger crucible if I was just using the 1100 watt microwave. Um, but I'm uh, suspecting that the 900 and the 600 will be useful for debinding um, and for lower temperatures uh, hold times. But anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and get started and I'll show you progress when I have it. Uh, okay, let's see. A little different than the rotary knobs. After the first 10 minutes, uh, we certainly have reached a good bit higher. Uh, almost, uh, let's say, max I've seen is about, wow, 375 peak. That's actually pretty good. Uh, and that's just the external. Um, the internal of the microwave is important to make sure you cool off in between runs. So there's a mini fan, which I use to cool off during uh, uh, rest times, uh, we'll call it. Now I'm going to go ahead and open this up and we'll get a measurement of the actual internal heating element so that we can benchmark this first run. All right, we're in for the second cycle. The first one peaked at around 21.1 uh, degrees Fahrenheit per uh, per minute and the max internal that I could read was about 275 so that's what I'm gonna go with I know at certain areas in there is probably hotter but uh, just with the limitations of the infrared gun I can't quite get all of the spots also if you'll notice I did slightly rotate at a uh, counter uh, at a clockwise direction doesn't really matter I guess uh, just rotated it slightly uh, so that we don't develop a, a big heat spot in one area, trying to even out those microwaves to get as even of a heating as we can. Okay, I'm stopping the tests after 30 minutes. Um, the reason why is, well, the numbers are looking almost identical to the 900 watt, and that's out of the ordinary uh, because we should be much higher uh, at a higher ramp rate than, than the others. Uh, let me go ahead and just throw the graphs up here and then I'll explain later. The important line here is going to be purple and it's very similar to what you saw with the 900 watt. I believe we've hit the max that our single elements can produce. Next steps will most likely be increasing the amount of silicon carbide per element, but this may take some time since I'm going to have to order another spool. Until then, I'll be prepping for a few more experiments that I have in the queue. Cheers.